All right, students, let's delve further into two of the five types of chemical reactions, namely synthesis and decomposition reactions. The essential question is, how do we recognize and finish synthesis and decomposition reaction equations? I would take a moment and write and divide your notebook up into the two parts, synthesis and decomposition. We're going to compare and contrast these two and see how they're both similar and different. It's a good idea to leave no room at the bottom to summarize your notes and to maybe answer that essential question. Let's start with synthesis reactions. Another name for a synthesis reaction is a composition reaction. So as you're looking online or in textbooks or in class, you might see both of these names synonymously written. Now in a synthesis reaction, typically we have two or more reactants that combine and form only one product. That's what composition or synthesis means. Now in this class, we're only gonna focus on the synthesis reactions where we start with two reactants. There is a common misconception among students. A synthesis reaction is not as easy as just taking those two substances and setting them next to each other. There's a lot more work involved. In a chemical reaction, typically substances rearrange themselves. And so let's talk about the four types of synthesis reactions. Take a moment and pause the video and write this list in the synthesis reactions part of your notebook. Now, of the four types of synthesis reactions, we're gonna go over them each one by one, but briefly, the first one is where we take two elements and combine them to form a compound. The second one is where we take a metal oxide and water and make a metal hydroxide. Now I've underlined the word metal in both cases because it could be any metal on the periodic table. This is what causes the variety of synthesis reactions. The same goes with the third reaction, metal oxide and carbon dioxide, combine to form metal carbonate. And the fourth one, metal chloride and oxygen combine to form metal chlorate. So here are the four different types. By the way, this list is provided to you in a condensed version on your periodic table, as shown here on the right. One thing to note about this list on the periodic table is because there's a variety of elements that could be listed as those metals, there's no way that this list can show you all the different potential subscript and balance coefficients for each of the different reactions. We're gonna have to take time and write those ourselves. And we'll go through some examples for each to make sure we know how to do that. To begin, and before we talk about each of the types of reactions, let's first talk about balancing a chemical reaction equation. We've taken some time to write down each of the substances. For example, here on the right is a reaction where hydrogen and oxygen combine to form water. Now, each of these substances are written correctly, depending on the hydrogen and oxygen being diatomic and water being a covalent compound. But you'll probably notice that this reaction isn't balanced. In fact, if we write the number of atoms in the reactants and the number of atoms in the products based on their types, you can see that oxygen is lacking in the product side. There's not enough of it. Now, we're not going to change the subscripts of oxygen in, these, in this reaction because that would change our substance. But what we can do after writing a reaction equation is add coefficients to change the number of each type. So for example, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the coefficient 2 in front of water. What this does is it multiplies both of those elements or that entire substance by 2 and changes their quantities. By doing that, I've balanced my oxygen in this reaction. Unfortunately, that means I unbalanced my hydrogen, but that's okay because I can also add a coefficient in front of hydrogen in the reactants, which changes the quantity there itself. So here is an example of a complete balanced written reaction. See if you can figure out this next reaction yourself. As a hint, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you account for both the reactant and product atoms based on their type. Pause the video right now and see if you can figure out the coefficients that go in front of each of these reactant substance and product substances. Well, in this reaction, what I'm going to do is I'm going to balance my oxygens because I can see that my oxygens are unbalanced. To do that, both of them multiply into six. So I'm going to multiply my reactant by two and my oxygen product by three, giving them six. Unfortunately, that unbalances both my sodium and my chlorine, but that's okay because I can change the coefficient in front of sodium chloride in my product, which also changes their quantities. Here is a balanced chemical reaction for that. 
All right, let's go over each of the different type of synthesis reactions. Here's the first type, an element and an element makes a compound. Here at the top is an example of this reaction. You're welcome to write it down in your notebook as an example, or you can just fill this practice problem out. I would pause this video and see if you can figure out what the product is based on the chart you see here on the left. All right, did you pause and try it out? We're gonna try this for each of the different types of reactions. But for this reaction, potassium and oxygen are both two elements and they combine to perform to make potassium oxide. The, the little subscript two down here happened because potassium has a charge of plus one and oxygen has a charge of minus two. So one thing to note is subscripts don't carry over in the product when you're writing these reactions. And that's okay. We need to make sure that we balance these, that we write these reactions based on whether they're elements, diatomic elements, ionic compounds, which this one's an ionic compound, or a covalent compound. The last thing we need to do is balance this reaction by adding coefficients. And so if we add a four in front of potassium and a two in front of potassium oxide, this reaction becomes balanced. All right, the second type is a metal oxide and water make a metal hydroxide as seen in this little chart right here. Here's an example of that up here. Why don't you go ahead and try to pause this video and see if you can figure out the products of this practice reaction right here. Well, notice I kind of flip these around on you. It doesn't matter if water is first or second, as long as we realize that there's a metal oxide in this reaction and water. Well, a metal oxide and water make a metal hydroxide. Our metal in this reaction is lithium. So the answer is gonna be lithium hydroxide. And we write lithium hydroxide like this based on its charges. Lithium being a plus one charge and hydroxide, a polyatomic ion found at the bottom of your periodic table has a negative one charge, so you only need one of each of those. Again, these subscripts don't carry over in the products. It all depends on what types of substances are combined with each other. Well, did you balance this reaction as well? To do that, we would need to add a coefficient of two in front of lithium hydroxide in the products. All right, the third type of synthesis reaction is a metal oxide and carbon dioxide, and those combine to form to make a metal carbonate. So here's calcium hydroxide, calcium being our metal, and carbon dioxide, and this makes calcium carbonate. And this reaction at the top is balanced. See if you can figure out the second reaction, the practice one, by pausing the video and trying it yourself. Well, in this reaction, our metal oxide is potassium oxide. So potassium is our metal. And carbon dioxide is also part of this reaction. So our metal oxide and our carbon dioxide is going to make a metal carbonate. So in this instance, it's going to make potassium carbonate. And we write potassium carbonate like this based on the coefficient, based on the charges of each potassium and carbonate. Potassium is a plus one charge, and carbonate is a minus two charge, as shown on the periodic table. Now this reaction is balanced. We don't need to add any coefficients based on the number of reactants and the number of product types of elements. All right, the last type of synthesis reaction is a metal chloride and oxygen combined to form to make a metal chlorate. So here we have an example of that up here. Here's our metal chloride, potassium chloride, and oxygen, and oxygen is diatomic. And then those combine to form a metal chlorate. So here's potassium chlorate. See if you can figure out this next example. Here's the answer to that. Calcium chloride, calcium being our metal, and oxygen combine to form to make calcium chlorate. So this is calcium chlorate based on the charges. To balance this reaction, we're going to need to add a 3 in front of oxygen in, in the front. To balance this reaction, we just need to add a three as a coefficient in front of oxygen and our reactants. All right, let's now talk about the other type of reaction, decomposition reaction. A decomposition reaction is just the opposite of a synthesis reaction. In a decomposition reaction, we start with one reactant and we break apart into multiple products. Specifically for this class, it'll break apart into two products. Now here are the four types of decomposition reactions. You might notice that this list is just the opposite of the list we wrote earlier. So you might not need to rewrite that list. In fact, if you take a look
look at the periodic table chart, notice that the arrows are going in both ways. Synthesis reactions are going to the right, and decomposition reactions are starting from the right and going to the left. They're just the opposite of those. Now, instead of going e through each of those one by one, I'm going to just have you pause the video right now and see if you can use that chart to determine the balanced chemical equation for each of these decomposition reactions. Did you pause the video? I sure hope you did. I sure hope you tried. Let's go over each of them individually. The first one is potassium carbonate. I'm looking through my list and I see that my third reaction down here has a metal carbonate as my decomposition reaction reaction starter. So I know that's going to make a metal oxide and carbon dioxide. So specifically my products are potassium oxide and carbon dioxide because my potassium is my metal. To balance this the reaction, I don't need to do anything because everything's there. All right, the second one looks like it's the first type of decomposition reaction. This is just a simple compound made of two elements. That's going to break apart into its two elemental forms, namely mercury and oxygen, making sure oxygen is diatomic. To balance this reaction, I need to add coefficients of two in front of mercury to oxide and the mercury in the products. The third type is potassium hydroxide. So looking through my list of decomposition, I see that kind of looks like this one, my metal hydroxide. So that breaks apart into metal oxide and water. So this reaction is going to break apart into potassium oxide and water. The third one is calcium chlorate. So I'm looking through my reactions and it looks like the last one. Calcium is my metal, so this is a metal chlorate. That metal chlorate is going to break apart into metal chloride and oxygen. So this one's going to break apart into calcium chloride and oxygen, with the coefficients being 2, 2, and 3, respectively. The last thing I want to talk about are the driving forces for synthesis and decomposition reaction. Why do synthesis and decomposition reactions react? What's driving them? Well, typically, these types of reactions transfer electrons and or form gases. Here is an example of a synthesis reaction where sodium and chloride come together to form sodium. Sodium and chlorine come together to form sodium chloride. Notice that the charges start as zero, but when sodium gives its electron to chlorine, sodium becomes positive one and chlorine becomes negative one. That's an example of transfer of electrons. Now for formation of a gas, there's a lot of decomposition reactions that form a gas as a product. In fact, you might notice that a lot of them form oxygen is a gas as a product. Some of them form carbon dioxide as gaseous products, but those are the driving forces, the standard driving forces for synthesis and decomp for many synthesis and decomposition reactions. All right, that leads us to the end of the notes. This is a good time to write an, a conclusion to the essential question. Make sure that you can answer that essential question. You might want to go back and highlight essential points and review and and try to figure out what the key terms are. And don't forget to relate this back to your learning objectives. Good luck.